Hey everybody, I'm MS Farzan, and welcome back to this video series on how to make a 2D multiplayer tabletop card game using Unity and Mirror. In this episode, we're going to pick up right where we left off. We just have a uh, pretty much a blank screen with a little draw cards button here that doesn't do much. So we're going to continue to add to our UI architecture for the game. The first thing we're going to do is create a background. We'll go up to Game Object, Create Empty. We have this empty game object. I'm going to call it Background. And I'm going to add a component here by clicking Add Component and look search for Image. And then I just have this empty uh, image that doesn't have a sprite. It has a white color and uh, nothing much else going on with it. That's my background. Doesn't look very good so far. So the the thing that I want to notice is that I see kind of like an outline for this thing, but I don't know where it is. I, I should see a color. We talked in the uh, previous episode about a about some objects being children of other game objects. And with a main canvas, generally we want things to be children of that game object, uh, of, the, of the main canvas game object. So I'm going to nest it under the main canvas but just by dragging it under the uh, in the hierarchy and then it appears on my screen. Note that because it is higher than the button in the in the hierarchy it is rendered uh, beneath the draw cards button. If I were to draw the button on top of this thing then the uh, then the uh, background would then be above the button. That's because the lower on the hierarchy something is, the closer to your eyeballs it is, uh, so to speak, um, in the way that, that Unity renders them. Because the button is higher on the main canvas hierarchy, um, that means it is further away from your eyeballs and you can't see it right now. So I'm going to make sure the background is pretty much the closest thing to the main canvas so everything else is rendered on top of it. I'm going to drag it over to the um, over to the the corner up here and drag it all the way to the the edges and it should pretty much snap to the grid basically I'm um, putting it if you're looking at the transform here I'm putting it at the um, the origin will be zero zero and zero and the width and height are 1920 by 1080 which should be the case because our canvas is that resolution as well as uh, the display uh, resolution of our game here I also uh, I mentioned that I make cyberpunk games so I want this to be a nice um, black color uh, that will uh, be a contrast to the draw cards button which is cyan if I hit play I see that I have this nice background of black with um, a draw cards button that's blue cool so what does a game scene need well it needs a few different things one of them is it needs a, um, a player area where my cards are going to go, and it needs an enemy area where my opponent's cards are going to go. You might have other use cases, like you might have four players or five players or who knows what, and that's a little bit more adventurous. That will take a little bit more work on your part. We're just going to be looking at what does it look like to have two people uh, playing a game synchronously on... Um, on, uh, well, I suppose you could say they're playing at the same time, so that's synchronously, but we're playing turn-based, so that's a little bit asynchronously. But in any case, two people playing at the same time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another um, image here by going to Game Object, Create Empty. And you could go down, for example, and create a 2D object. If you had a sprite um, you wanted to add, you could absolutely do it this way. I'm just going the most basic way by saying Create Empty. And I've created an empty game object, and I'm going to call this one player player area. And I don't see it anywhere, so I need to drag it up um, under the uh, under the main canvas. Remember, if I drag it behind the um, the uh, the background, I'm not going to see it anywhere. So I need to drag it lower than the background on the hierarchy. And I'm going to add a component here. I'm going to add another image. And the for the player area, let's say I want it to be the same color as the draw cards, um, the draw cards button. So when I look at this uh, the source image, if I had a sprite here, like some nifty uh, panel that an artist had made for me, I could use that. 
Instead, I'm going to um, use the the um, this little eyedropper button. It might be hard for you to see on on um, on your screen. I'm going to use the eyedropper button to select whatever color I use for the dry cards here as I hover over it. Click that, and now it becomes that color. And then I can make my my player area by just dragging it like this. And I actually have a, a little cheat sheet on the on the um, uh, on my side of things. Um, that will help me to uh, define the exact uh, height and width and everything that I want. Um, I want this to be um, uh, a width of, well, what I have, 1920, and a height of 195. So it's going to be a little bit, a little bit lower there and move this over so that it's right in the middle of the screen, just like that. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And then what I will uh, wanna do is create an enemy area um, that's at the top of the screen. Um, that's pretty much a duplicate of this one. So I could just right click on this player area and say duplicate, and I get this player area one. I'll just rename that to enemy area and drag it to the top of the screen. Make sure that I'm clicking the right thing here. Yep, enemy areas at the top of the screen. That looks great to me. Uh, and what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna change the color to like a cyberpunk hot pink. Yeah, maybe a little, even a little bit lighter than that. That looks good, great. Cool, so I've got my player area and my enemy area up here. Now in my particular game, I, I want to have some place, so my cards are going to come from this area down here, and my opponent's cards are going to come from this area down here, and I want something in the middle, um, which we're going to call a drop zone, where players can drop their cards. Okay, so let's just make another uh, duplicate of this. We can duplicate the enemy area and call this guy, or girl, or person, I should say, drop zone. And put it right next to the uh, the uh, enemy area and the player area, and um, let's just uh, make sure it's selected. Oh, it's up here, and put it right in the middle here, and it snaps right to the grid, which is great. And let's choose a different color here. Um, let's choose like a cyberpunk green. What do you think? Yeah, that's pretty garish, isn't it? <laughs> That'll be our drop zone. Very good, excellent, we're in good shape. So that's what our uh, basic user interface is gonna look like uh, for the game. We uh, will need to work on making our cards for the game, which is gonna be a, um, a big component of our next video. So let's just keep it there with this um, uh, ba very basic user interface and we'll pick up with uh, making cards in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. I hope it's been helpful for you. Please be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more. You can also follow me on Twitter, and I'd love for you to check out my own books and games. I'll include a link for that in the description for this video. We'll see you next time.